When I turn on the light and I shine it through one of these uh, double slits, we can see how the light spreads out left and right uh, in a sort of a long line and there's this kind of really bright maxima in the middle. If I have it without that uh, double slit, it just sort of tends to form a fairly bright point in the middle and there's no kind of uh, other effects. So we're going to look at that now uh, as we have a go at doing Young's double slit experiment that he first performed in 1801. The setup for Young's double slit experiment is, is fairly straightforward. What we have is uh, something with a double slit in it and uh, we can look at the distance between the two slits as a distance that we call little a. So little a is a slit separation. We then shine the light um, that's coherent and we shine it through this onto a screen. Now the screen is a distance of d meters away. So the distance from the slit to the screen is a distance big D. And what we tend to find is that we get a bright point in the middle and then we have a point where there's a um, destructive interference of light and then we have another bright point and another bright point. Now that's not so clear uh, for some good reasons that I'll cover later but if we sort of have a look at the intensity so we can maybe have a, a small bright point gets brighter, we get a massive maximum in the middle gets brighter and brighter to the sides and it kind of keeps doing this what this tends to do is it tends to spread the light out. So we get the brightest point, then it's dark, then it's bright, then it's dark, then it's bright, then it's dark. And what we can look at is the separation of these fringes. Now, in a lab, in the dark, it's a lot easier to measure than what I've just shown here. But what we can look at is the distance between fringes as equal to x. And if we look at a, d and x, these are all related to the wavelength of light. And what we find is that the wavelength of light is equal to a x over d. So in a bit more detail, a is the slit separation. That is the distance between the slits. Now often uh, there will be some information printed on the, the, the thing that you're using, but you can measure it using a travelling microscope. So this is a microscope that moves along a very small distance, so you can very accurately read the distance uh, or the length of very small objects. x is the fringe separation. Uh, and we talk about the light and the dark fringes and it's often easier to measure perhaps a distance of 10 fringes and then divide by 10 to get the distance of one because it's going to be you know fractions of a millimeter and then finally distance from uh, whatever you're projecting the light onto from the the actual um, slit that's fairly easy to measure using a meter ruler you know because that'll give you an accuracy of uh, 0.1 percent or something so uh, what we need then is uh, some of these distances here and by doing that you can measure the wavelength of light. So if you know the separation of the slit, you know how far it is to the screen and you know the slit separation, then you can work out the wavelength of the light that you're shining through. But there's one problem that I've got here that, uh, that Young had to overcome somehow. I'm using a laser which sends out uh, coherent light all of the same wavelength, but these didn't exist a couple of hundred years ago in 1801 when Young did the experiment. So what he did was he sent his white light through a single slit first of all. Now I can't remember if he used white light or if he used colour, he could have perhaps used some kind of colour filter where the filter absorbs all the colours of white light and just lets one through. So perhaps a, wet, a red filter should uh, send just red light through. But if you send it through one filter or one slit first of all, that wave then diffracts. We send that diffracted light through another slit and then you get the two sets of light diffracting at that double slit and then you have the coherent wave source which is interfering with itself. So the problem with this experiment is that if you want to measure the wavelength of light it's very hard to do because the slit is so small and that means not a huge amount of light, of light actually get through these very very tiny slits that we have here. That means when it comes to measuring the fringe separation it's often hard to get a good precise reading. Is there a better way? Yes, there is.